Well, we're trying. You know, we've we've come out with uh, and and pushed in the last couple of years something called permit simplicity, which is uh, pre-qualifying the architects and engineers, such that when they have stamped somebody's plans, they go to the whatever jurisdiction that they are building in, and they virtually get uh, a permit over the counter. So that will speed up for companies wanting to relocate. You know, mm -hmm. it's like now you've got a I can get in so much quicker. Welcome back. I'm Mark Haney, and I'm joined by Chuck Chet Fight. He is the managing partner of Fight Development, but so much more. So you have been in this uh, region, what, your entire life, Chet? 50 years. 50 years. Okay, so, okay, so talk to me about uh, your entrepreneurial journey, and I, I think it started quite a, while ago, quite a while ago, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, my family relocated from Arkansas, Okay. actually 50 years ago today. Wow. And my father was a uh, test pilot at McClellan. Okay. He met a guy named Buzz Oates at church and uh, got into partners with him very quickly. So our company started in 1970. So we're a 48-year-old company. Wow. Wow. I've been uh, working in the development side for 38 years. And so in these last 50 years, you've obviously seen Sacramento change. Our region has, uh, doesn't look the same as it did when you and I were kids. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> Particularly out here, okay, in Placer County. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, so what part of uh, town is your uh, is your development most focused on? Because you guys have what uh, like a million plus square feet of uh, of development, right? Right. Right now, you know, my office is at fifty in Bradshaw area in the old winery uh, on Folsom Boulevard. Oh there. yeah. We we redeveloped that, and that's where the majority of three out of the four corners at fifty in Bradshaw we did the development on. Capital nice. Christian Center and all that yes. stuff next to there, and ah. you know everything uh, where the where the old drive-in theater is. Yes, all that along in there, and then all Business Park Drive and everything along that way. So that whole fifty yeah. corridor type thing. Yeah. So let's talk about the uh, you know the size of your business, um, what it's like being you, uh, the uh, the man running this whole enterprise. Well, I you know I guess you, you end up being jack of all trades. Uh, okay. With uh, the finance side, I grew up uh, working out in the construction. You know, I think my first paycheck goes at, at back to when I was twelve. Uh -huh. Were um, you swinging a hammer? I, I mean, was. What, uh, you, what were you doing? I, I I was pulling nails at twelve, but uh, okay. then I ended up on the uh, as a laborer on the concrete crew ah. all through high school. Uh, it was uh, that was some pretty tough work back <laughs> yeah. before they had automatic screeds. Uh, they had wheelbarrows at least. <laughs> huh? <laughs> they, they call them Georgia buggies. Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, so you started off as this uh, construction uh, helper, laborer, uh, and you worked your way up. Uh, so describe uh, that journey and, like, what do you do today? How do you spend your time today? You know, right now, I just, you know, I spend time. We, we manage our own properties. Uh, we have uh, two construction companies. We have uh, our own that does our own, all of our tenant improvements. Uh, we do our, when we're building, we build our own buildings. We also have an insurance repair company. That stays extremely busy. I think we've got in, in excess of 70 jobs going at any one time with the insurance repair business. Uh, I'm a licensed broker, so we do our own brokerage and stuff. Uh, and we have staff on, on uh, we have crew on staff that does all our property management work and stuff like that. So you, you know a lot of developers, you're in, you know a lot of entrepreneurs, you're the, uh, you're the incoming president of region business, am I correct? correct? Yeah. yeah. So you talk, I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs, you talk to a lot of entrepreneurs, you feel like there's common threads in entrepreneurship that help people to be successful? Work. Hard, uh, hard okay. work. Okay. Yeah. Dedication, hard work, keep your eye on the goal. Yeah. Marcus and I were talking earlier about uh, some misconceptions of misconceptions in entrepreneurship and that it's it's really a little bit tougher than what people think it's uh it's maybe even more work than than what we think would you agree oh absolutely particularly in today's regulatory environment you know what what you could do 30 years ago and the permitting process and stuff was so much simpler than it is now mm -hmm. and we've got so many layers of regulations, whether it's local, state, federal, that you have to deal with. Well, as president of region business, um, you're, you're addressing some of that stuff. Tell us what you're doing. Well, we're trying, you know, we've, we've come out with uh, and, and pushed in the last couple of years something called permit simplicity, which is uh, pre-qualifying the architects and engineers 
such that when they have stamped somebody's plans, they go to the whatever jurisdiction that they are building in, and they virtually get a, a permit over the counter. So that will speed up for companies wanting to relocate. You know, mm -hmm. it's like now you've got to, I can get in so much quicker. Right. So what's on the horizon for you guys? You've got all this property. You're obviously uh, super successful. Um, what's, uh, what's exciting for you, Chet, fight right now when you've accomplished so much? Well, we're actually going to be building some buildings in Rancho Cordova. Love uh, it. This next year. Uh, finally, the economy's picked up enough where we can uh, get rents that will commiserate with the uh, uh, construction costs, which have gone up. You know, everybody who's working in construction is, is working. Mm -hmm. It's hard to find people to do jobs. And, you know, the Bay Area has been a huge draw for those people. Yeah. And so getting people to stay here locally has been really tough. Well, you know, the stock market's been uh, down. This It's been up uh, for a long time now, but now it's been this, it's shakier today, this last week, and makes you think about just being ready for something uh, unexpected to happen, like the cost of a laborer, right? So you go out there and you're, you're projecting how much uh, something's going to cost to build. Now you got to pay these contractors uh, a lot more money to get the work done. That, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. So are you guys finding like budget uh, challenges where you're like, oh, man, how are we going to deal with this? We didn't project this. Well, you know, historically, we've been really conservative, so uh, we don't go out and get ahead of ourselves. If it doesn't pencil, we don't build it. I'm not wow. going to build it on some pumped-up performa. Okay, so you we were talking earlier about your kids are uh, more free-spirited. Uh, they you train them to be independent thinkers. They haven't gone the entrepreneurial rate uh, way. They're uh, they're doing their own thing and they're happy. But where did your philosophy? Obviously, they didn't fall into dad's uh, footsteps. Where did your philosophies come from? By this work ethic and this uh, drive to build things and to stay conservative. Uh, you know, a lot of it came from my grandfather. Uh, he was. Um you know, he lived through the Great Depression. And so as a kid, you're listening to him tell you the stories, you know, be sure you save money, be sure you do this, you know, because it can all go away, because it did. And so yeah. we certainly saw the Great Recession, and uh, we didn't let go one person through the whole recession. Wow. We didn't have to downsize at all. You're like the only company I've ever talked to that didn't let anybody go. How many employees did you have? Uh, it's around 50. And you were able to keep all 50 yeah. employees. Wow. That must have uh, been challenging, right? You, yeah. you have to prepare. You had some, uh, you had an nest egg built up where you could, uh, you could right. deal with that. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Very incredible. So you're more, you're more than fight development. You're, you're more than fight development. Uh, you're more than region business. What are the other things that you do? I know you're, uh, aren't you the chairman of the board for a bank? Yeah. Chairman of American River Bank. Okay. Yeah. And you've been doing that a long time. So, I mean, what else are you doing? Describe uh, how you might divide your time between all your, uh, your operations. Well, uh, the bank takes a fair amount of time. Uh, I've been chairman for 17 years. I've been on the board for 25 years. Um, we also have Sacramento Gun Club which is the largest indoor range in Northern California. That's right, yeah. Um, th that's kind of been an interesting endeavor. Did that uh, start because of a hobby? You like to shoot guns, so we're going to start a gun club? No, honestly, it started because we had an empty building we couldn't fill up, so we, <laughs> we generated a business to, to ah, fill it up. I love it. it it's, you wonder why pe how people get into business. And, you know, we're also talking about, like, these uh, misconceptions. Did anything surprise you in that business? Like, was it harder than what you thought to make a go of it? Extremely harder. Okay, what were the biggest challenges in starting a gun club? Uh, you know, in the commercial development side, you deal with business owners. And that, that, is, that is easier than dealing with the public. So when you have a retail business and you're dealing with public, retail is really a different animal. And I don't think I was quite prepared for that. Okay, so you own all these retail uh, developments, right? You are a you own shopping centers, you own stuff like that. So, what about the uh, challenges that brick and mortar type retailers are facing in today's uh, economic environment with technology and the Amazon effect? It's huge. I I, I wouldn't go into retail anymore. I'm just okay, keep what we have. I wouldn't build anymore. You know, the Amazons of the world and. You know, it's 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 become a different shopping experience. You 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 can read the news almost monthly and find out malls that have closed down, trying to be repurposed for some other use. Okay, so just sharing uh, your views on Sacramento a little bit. We've got some guys coming up in the show that that are focused on Elk Grove, and you know we all love our hometown. But thinking about where do you envision our hometown going from here? Well, I think Sacramento, the region has a lot of opportunities. Um, I think you've got 
more opportunities uh, really in the suburban markets, whether it be Elk Grove or Rancho Cordova or Placer County, uh, because you got more land to expand. Um, and I think the real key for Sacramento is we've got to draw businesses, uh, new businesses into the region. That then generates jobs, then it generates people who want to spend their money, whether it's on gasoline or retail or uh, more money to go into the school districts or whatever. We just need to have more jobs. But the engine that drives all that are the jobs. What do you think the biggest challenges we face are here in Sacramento? You talked about regulation. Um, beyond that, I mean, we were thought of uh, many times as a government town. Maybe there's even a government mentality uh, running through uh, the philosophies that uh, have uh, that drift into our way of thinking are coming from people who have worked for the government for a long time. Well, that's, that's a, a true statement. Um, I, I think the biggest challenge that we have in the Sacramento region is being in the state of California. Okay. I'm very frank about that. You know, Go, uh, I, I think elaborate. That, I think there's an awful lot of regulations that are imposed upon us as entrepreneurs and as business people without a thought of what that really does to the, the viability of business. So we're talking to entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs listening to the program. What advice would you give them? You start thinking about the, uh, hey, it's a tough climate and, uh, you know, we got the state regulations, we got local regulations, we got technology, we got, we got challenges in our life. Advice for, you know, how we're going to deal with these challenges. What do we do? We get up and move? What are we supposed to do? Well, I, I, you know, I think that uh, Sacramento and the Valley of California have got a different mentality than the coastal cities. And I think they've always had this Midwestern, more, more Midwestern type work ethic. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I, I can play the game if you tell me the rules, but don't change the rules mid game. Yeah. And that's the biggest problem that I think we have is the, the speed and velocity of which changes come down where you have prepared a project, in my case, you know, a development project, you've prepared it, you get down the road and something's changed, whether it's, you know, ADA requirements or another fee or this or that, it, it completely topples your whole pro forma. And you go, hmm, now what do I do? Yeah, yeah. I have this fascination. If enough of the most successful guys like yourself help enough of the up-and-comers, we can create an entrepreneurial revolution and that you know a lot of people end up feeling a little bit alone out there. And so that's what these conversations are about is really how to share real-world perspective about winning, about battling, about work ethic, and making somebody uh, on the other end of this uh, uh, sound – on the radio to to think a little bit, maybe do a little self reflection, think about how they might want to uh, to chase their dreams. So, any closing thoughts that you'd like to cover coming on the show? Appreciate you sharing your story. Just closing thoughts about. Uh, no, I, I appreciate you having me on the show. The only thing I would say would be along those lines of your last statement is um, the young folks out there who want to have access to some guys with some, you know, uh, war wounds. Uh, I personally would, would happily, you know, talk to these young guys and say, hey, you know what? Uh, been there, done that. Let me tell you, this is, you don't have to worry about this. This you do have to worry uh, about. I love it, Chet. Chet Fight, uh, I will take you up on that offer uh, because I'm uh, in entrepreneurial circles all day long, and, uh, and you would be one of those guys that uh, I would be proud to recommend and bring in as a mentor or as a sounding board. If you like our entrepreneurial stories, if you like the messages that we bring uh, that inspire, uh, if you want a little more Mark Haney, not everybody does, but if you do, Feel free to subscribe, feel free to be part of our community, engage, comment, share. Uh, I wanna get to know you better, you wanna get to know me better. Follow me on all our social media platforms at The Mark Haney. I look forward to knowing you better and uh, let's get to know each other better so we can help build these businesses that we love.